Pretending that there wasn't a big, long gap between recordings, let's listen to the wind. Or maybe we don't have to listen to the wind, because I already know what this song is. I do enjoy how you can literally howl forever if you want to. Somehow Wolf Link just doesn't run out of breath. Must be a special power that dogs have, I don't know. I apologize for speaking over Zelda's lullaby. Because it is one of the prettiest songs in video games. Perhaps. Then again, I guess Zelda in general has several of the prettiest songs in video games. Or, as I established really early in this LP, like a year ago, that, uh... It might not necessarily be a song, because there might be a distinction between song and tune. But I don't know, I mean... I think it, it's perfectly okay to say song doesn't always have to contain singing. So anyways... These guys are a little bit on the annoying side. As is the Sacred Grove in general, I mean, people always seem to get stuck in this place. And... I'm pretty sure you go uh, go through here twice. The goal is just to always find Skull Kid here, who doesn't look anything like the Nintendo 64 equivalent. I don't know if it's supposed to be the same Skull Kid or what, but he does not have a duck beak. He has more of a jack-o'-lantern-esque face. Something that you would expect to see in Nightmare Before Christmas, I think. Kind of like, uh, the face of the guy, the mayor of Halloween Town, or whatever it's called. That is the happy face, not the angry face. Whenever he says, Jack, are you home? We have to get ready for next Halloween! Yeah, I think... Like, supposedly the strategy is to always follow the light. If you hear the light at the end of a tunnel, then that's where the Skull Kid is. But this looks like where most of the light is, and I'm not seeing a Skull Kid here. Unless it's just hiding behind the tree. And then the other thing is, if you hear his horn, then that should be the same room that he's in. Yeah, there he is up there. I just have to find a way to that. Behind the waterfall, because all secrets in video games are behind waterfalls. Even though this isn't really a secret, it's the way to go. Come to think of it, the horn that he blows is a lot like the... the Deku horns in Majora's Mask. That you play whenever you're a Deku scrub. I don't know if it's the same horn, because it's certainly smaller, the one that he has right now, but... it's similar, in just that there are several horns packed into one horn if that made any sense at all. Several horns packed into one horn sounds kind of like an antler. Just a single moose antler. Alright, I see you up there. I have to climb the tree, but I'm a dog. I'm no good at climbing trees. Unless they're very conveniently laid out like this. As far as why I haven't played this game much lately, um, part of the reason for that is I've been busy making my own game, and part of it is I'm in the process of moving to a new place, to a new state and house, just... which that in and of itself means a lot of stuff is going on. But then on top of that, um, I just haven't really felt that great of an urge to play this game, even though it is one of my favorites. I just haven't been in the mood for it, and I don't want to try to commentate over this game while I'm not in the mood for it. Because then it just won't turn out okay at all. But... I think I'm in the mood for at least a short playthrough today. And today is... oh, what is today? Gosh, I don't know. Um, July 18th, it looks like? Yeah, July 18th. Had to look at my 
supposedly universe, uh, universe, no, satellite accurate clock, which is always inaccurate on day daylight savings, because it doesn't convert to daylight savings time. Then again, apparently, part of the state of Indiana, not all of it, but part of it, doesn't convert to daylight savings time. So I've heard. So, that's a place I would like to be, wherever that is, because I don't like daylight savings time at all. But I was going to say, like, I think I'm in the mood to play this game right now, because it is a very mellow game, and I'm just in a mellow mood right now. Darn it. Okay, I know what I'm supposed to do here, I'm just not thinking. And no, you don't need to tell me. I've got it figured out. To kill all the monsters, you can say kill whenever they're not really alive in the first place. And then once they're all gone, he blows his horn, you attack him. All is well with the world. I like how he has a... Uh, well, I mean, I, I guess it's a he. I don't know if Skull Kid really specifies gender, but I've always assumed Skull Kid to be a he. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being biased. I have no idea. Of course, I'm pretty sure he's a he in uh, Dora's Mask anyways. But I like that he has a, a tattered leaf for a cape. Nice personality driving home thing. Words. I guess all of these creatures have tattered leaf capes, don't they? Which is now reminding me of the, uh, the Girl Scouts in A Bug's Life. I'm trying to remember what their names were. Because. It definitely had a, spe a specified name, and I'm just not recalling what it was. I want to say they were like the peas, but that's not right. Something similarly tiny sounding, though. Because Dot is a tiny sounding name, and she's part of a tiny sounding group because they're all baby ants. Oh, you're such a cute little aphid! That's a movie that I've been meaning to watch again, but I just haven't lately. So I really like A Bug's Life, and the ending always gets me emotional. Oh yes, here's a part of the game that nobody likes except for me. I don't know, like, people seem to hate this part for being this ridiculously hard puzzle that, um, kind of halts the flow of the gameplay. But, I don't know, I mean... This game isn't all that fast-paced to begin with, and I don't really feel like a hard puzzle somewhere in the middle that has very established rules that, to some, aren't that difficult to understand. I don't know. It's... I don't see it as a problem, like other people do. But here we go. It is tricky to understand if you don't know at all what you're doing. That, that's kind of a self-explanatory statement, actually. We are the guardians of the land. Guide us to where we once stood. Only then can you enter the true sacred grove. And I'm pretty sure they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes where, but... Um... I think there's only... Like, you can only get them to where they're supposed to be. I don't know how to explain it, but... Like, one will always go to one specific location, no matter how you solve the puzzle, is my understanding of it. Okay, so let's just see if I'm... if uh, I'm educated enough with this puzzle... that I haven't solved in a long time and I don't just automatically know the answer to. Uh... Well, I can't go up, because either I will fall off the ledge, or I will just not be able to go up. Um... Hmm. Well, I think this makes sense for... 
keeping this guy on the left. Then do this. Do this. Yeah, this this looks good. Alright, I think we got it. Just get them to their own little spaces and then... Yeah, I, I like puzzles like that. And I think that one's set up in a way that it's not super difficult. Like, again, I didn't have the puzzle uh, solution planned out ahead of time. I didn't look it up before this. And I don't just remember it from a previous playthrough. I just had to re-figure it out again, because I like figuring things out like that. There's a, a cave in this game that has a whole bunch of ice puzzles. I don't remember the solutions to those either, but I really want to figure them out again. Just all over again. Because they're fun. Speaking of fun, that was a fun face that you made just now, Wolf Link. Or should I say, regular Link, because our curse has been lifted. Heck yeah. Uh, this is probably like... Well, I don't know. I guess Ocarina of Time has some competition, but... This, to me, is the most epic unveiling of Link as the hero with the Master Sword. This is the, the greatest instance of him pulling it out. Just with all the wind blowing everything away. Super cool. Not to mention those crazy sword motions. Smug Midna is smug. Certainly looks like shadow magic. Mm hmm. Oh, clever use of a curse. Look at it, you have been cursed! <laughs> yes, since Zant was kind enough to give it to us, we should be thankful and use it all we can. Yeah, because there are some things that we can't do as a human that we can do as a wolf. And if we can turn into a wolf, quote-unquote, any time, then uh, nothing should be an issue anymore, should it? Say, quote-unquote, any time, because... Well, you can't transform around people. If anyone sees you, you just can't do it. And that might be changed in Twilight Princess HD, I'm not really sure. I like that little bit right there when Midna's just... I don't know what the word for that would be. Like, she's, uh... Not shy, that's not it, but just more reserved in that moment. As she disappears under you in a shadow. Alright, now... She's talking about the Mirror of Twilight, and I happen to know where that is. Um, and now that we have our wolf form, we can warp wherever we want, so... Which we have to do in order to leave... Um, leave the Sacred Grove. Although I'm not entirely sure where we're supposed to go next. I mean, I know generally where we're supposed to go next, because I know where the Mirror of Twilight is, even though she doesn't. Alright, um... I guess Castletown is where we're gonna go next. I just don't know where the clue to find the place that I already know where it is, is. Very poorly constructed... Uh, a constructured sentence. I'm the best at speaking. Always. Now, here's something fun. Assuming he appears. Mr. Link, wait! And then we turn from a wolf into regular Link. Somehow the postman recognizes us, despite us not being a person. I don't know, maybe, maybe the postman should be the one literally saving the world, because... He seems to have special powers beyond our comprehension. 
guess we could read that letter. Hmm. There are some folks. Alright, yeah. I don't know what the, the League's name is, but there is a group now at Telma's Bar whom we can talk to for clues whenever we're stuck. And I don't know for sure if I need to see them, but I'm assuming that I do, so I'm just going to go ahead and see what's up. Going this back way so that we can skip a loading screen on the way there. Gotta love the hustle and bustle of Hyrule Town, Hyrule Castle Town, or is it just Castle Town? One of those names. Of many names. Maybe it is just Pittsburgh. From now on, that is what Castle Town will be referred to as, it's just Pittsburgh. Except not really. I've missed this place, and I've missed my uh, oh. inability to run at full speed indoors. Hey. Hello, folks. This handsome young man is the infamous Link. Why am I infamous? I mean, okay, I guess infamous... What does infamous mean? It's just, like, famous within a small circle of people. I guess. But I always think about infamous with that line from Spider-Man where he's, uh, where the... the newspaper guy, whose name I forget, says, well, if, we, he, if he's not going to be famous, we're going to make him infamous. And I always thought, when I first heard that line in that movie, I thought he meant, well, if he's not going to be famous in a good way, let's make him famous in a bad way. That was my interpretation of what infamous meant. This is Ashe. I don't know the pronunciation, but I guess Nintendo doesn't have official pronunciations for these characters as far as I know. Because it seems like people within Nintendo don't speak the um, characters' names the same way. She's an interesting character because she's just kind of shady, and that's her one characteristic, is that she's shady and tough. And this guy is just a straight-up nerd. I'm Shad. Wonderful to meet you. That's just how I picture him talking. Tomo told me all uh, you've been up to. You're rather formidable. I'm rather not, I'm afraid. Well, I'm, I'm formidable at book reading, but I lack, shall we say, physical skills. Y yes, I'm, I'm a bookworm, and uh, I, I cannot fight. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much useless to you, except... Well, as is revealed later, I'm just useless to you, actually. And this is Russell. I mean, I didn't... I didn't say anything whenever he unveiled his uh, true identity, but yeah, this guy with... I don't even know how he sees out of that helmet. I guess that's chainmail, and maybe you can see through chainmail. I don't know. You probably couldn't see through it very well. That's what it looks like, though. It doesn't look like visor uh, goggle stuff. It doesn't look like glass or plastic or anything. One of the reasons that I'm kind of mellowed out right now is... I had this crazy thought, maybe it's not that crazy, um, the other night, about how with artists and creativity, like, sometimes whenever we're um, trying to put a piece of art together, we have a certain vision for it, but then that vision gets lost over time. And part of the reason for that is whenever we have this vivid dream in our heads and we try to make it reality, sometimes the reality of creating it becomes a distraction. Like, whatever the vision in our heads is has to be compromised just by the discerning what's doable or not doable. And then it gets scaled down from whatever is in our minds and we forget what our original vision was. I think that uh, the game To the Moon kind of explains that, like how um, it has the concept of what if in following a dream you had the same ambition, the same motivation for it at the very end that you did at the very start and how strong your uh, 
realization of those dreams would be. Like, that's an interesting game just for that concept, I think. But I thought, like, what kind of brain exercises could you do to have a better flow of commentary and stuff like that on Let's Plays? And just have a better, like, alertness when thinking about things. And so before this, I decided to meditate because that was one of the ideas that I researched for how to have a more alert mind and memory. And so I thought that was interesting. I tried it, and I think it works, because... Ultimately, the best, uh... Probably the best... Yes, I, ent I want to enter the desert. Thank you, sort of creepy eyes. Aru. He's not Raru, but he's Aru. Which is uh, a name that I can say in my wolf form. Aru. I was gonna say that, uh... I think it helps to meditate because it kind of gives you, uh... You can just go on a random train of thought. Just have whatever your mind... Just, just follow wherever the wind blows in your mind. Not to say that your mind is so empty that wind is blowing in it, but you might know what I mean. It's nice practice for that. And it's a nice way to get in a relaxed state of mind, and a relaxed state of mind is probably the best state of mind to have for commentating. And for just brainstorming and whatever else. Okay, so I have the memo. I wasn't paying any attention to that dialogue at all, but I'm pretty sure I take this memo to the uh, to the guy over here to fire, which means I have to equip it. Nope, that's not the button. That's the button. What does this say anyway? Oh, okay, it's just it's the memo that you bring to him. Here you go, bullet bill arm and heart knee. I mean. I've heard of people saying you wear your heart on your sleeve, or something to that effect, but he just wears his heart on his knees. I don't know enough idioms for that to make any sense. I like how those look like buttons on a shirt. Those random calliope whatever those are. Those levers. I've only heard a calliope once, and it was whenever I went to New Orleans once. 